I am a technical leader at Kitwell. Um, this actually talk representing two projects, one at the Kitwell itself, um, and it's primarily funded by DOE. And the other one is, uh, is developed within, uh, within NOAA. And what we have been trying to do is trying to work together to make sure that we can share the code as much as possible because both of these projects are actually open source projects. And when I say open source, they are true open source. So they're not um, binding you um, by any means. So they are basically like license. You can modify them as you need. Um, so really quickly about Kitware. Kitware is primarily a open source company. And the idea there is that by doing open source, we try to build collaboration with the universities, um, national labs, and other organizations. So um, you know, by making the code out there, it's much, it's much easier for us to work with the other folks. Um, so first of all, the Climate Pipes um, was um, funded by DOE as a phase one SBIR. And um, when I take a lead on the project, uh, we had six months to perform. Um, and at that time, I realized that there are not many out open source tools out there to do things that we want to do, which is trying to combine the GIS, geovisualization, and, uh, and some of the climate data analysis into a single package. So the idea um, behind the climate pipes that we build something with the Python backend and JavaScript front end that let you create some interesting um, interactive or batch mode visualization and analysis um, in, a, in a web browser or a command line mode. So like I said, the goal is to bring the web GIS. And um, GIS is, a, is actually not a new field. Um, and so it's not WebGIS either, but with the improvements in JavaScript and uh, um, you know other hardware and softwares, I think uh, the WebGIS is really changing how we look at the data, um, um, you know, um, in a in a collaborative environment. So here's the big overview of the climate pipes architecture. Um, it does involve a lot of uh, different toolkits, uh, but they all are open source. So again, they're not binding by any means. The idea here is that you will have a web server uh, that's taking a request and then performing uh, operations based on the request on HPC or your own local workstation and produce some um, outputs. Now, the interesting piece here is that um, we construct the workflows, which is based on Vistrails. Um, Vistrails is developed at NYU and they are actually um, partner in the Climate Pipes project. So the idea here is that we construct the workflows that get executed on the server side, and then we bring those results back to the web browser for visualization. And that can be done either interactive, or we can do it as just sending the uh, images back from the server. So the different pieces involved in Climate Pipes are um, the front-end side, we actually built our own tools. Um, the most important one is the GeoJS, and that's really the, um, the geo-visualization library. So I think you know, there are a lot of mapping libraries out there, and they let you draw things, but there's a cost to pay. Uh, sometimes the, the tiles are not free. There's open layers, but open layers is really focused on GIS as much, not as much on the climate side. So the GeoJS kind of you know, takes a step forward and bring the visualization that combines the mapping as well as the, uh, the visualization on the web browser. Um, on the back end, um, we have a corresponding um, a Python backend for GeoJS. We just call it PyGeo. And then the, some of the fundamental tools we use on the back end are um, VTK, um, which is uh, developed by Kitware. Um, O Open Climate GIS, which is a NOAA um, uh, project, the UVC DAT, uh, which is the uh, DOE uh, big initiative, and uh, some of the other tools that um, um, Matthew has mentioned earlier, like Google and uh, Proj4. 
So the features that we provide as part of the client pipes is the uh, are these um, data discovery, integration, visualization analysis, uh, work from provenance that comes from Vistrails, and the web services infrastructure. I won't go into too much detail on the coding side, but if you have any questions, uh, I'm more than happy to answer afterwards or on a separate one-to-one uh, -one talk, I guess. Um, so one of the challenges that we have in the uh, web GIS or the climate world is to integrate data from different sources. Uh, one of the sources that we um, had um, um, you know, thought about is the ESGF, which is the uh, DOE data repository for climate data sets, which has all different kind of data sets, CMIP5, um, and, you know, CMIP6, CMIP4. Um, so how do we integrate uh, without much um, complications to the user to ESGF? At the same time, we want to like visualize local and remote data sets that actually residing on the server side or, or um, some third party. So we try to integrate with the um, data sets and making those repositories um, or keeping that metadata in the Mongo database so that we can we can figure out like you know where the data came from and how do we retrieve that data. Um, what you can see on your here um, on this in this interface that you can quickly search uh, whatever the um, data sources you have configured and then you can drag and drop onto the map, so you can visualize those results. Um, so now, as I said, it's a, it's a combination of front-end and back-end, so some things we do on the front-end in JavaScript and some things we do in back-end in Python. A um, couple of things we do, like picking. So here, in this image, I have shown that the user has clicked on a particular point, and we do a time series plot, which is a very you know, um, um, common operation that people do. So here what we do is actually we send the mouse locations X and Y to the backend in Python um, using WebSockets in this case um, so that we can have interactive applications. And then uh, on the Python side of things, it just kind of computes the, the time series and sends that back as a JSON that we, we render using um, an SVG on the browser. Uh, in this particular case, we are using D3 because that's, uh, that's a pretty good library for drawing 2D plots. And uh, like I said, um, this is a combination of both front-end and back-end. The climate data layer, as you can see on the map, is actually um, computed by the VTK and CDAT on the back-end. And we just send the data as a GeoJSON to the front-end for the rendering. So again, based on like, you know, how you configure things and where you want the rendering to happen, uh, we, we, we do on the back-end or the front-end. Now, this is an interesting piece. Uh, the idea here is that when you write a Python code, um, you want to serve your uh, Python classes or modules or functions over the web. So how do we do that? So we use something called uh, something like decorators in Python. And if you put those decorators on your functions, then you can um, serve those functionalities over the web at the web services. Um, again, um, it's, the idea was that as a climate scientist or as an analyst, you don't have to worry about all the things that you don't really, um, you know, um, paid for, I guess, or not interested. Uh, so it's make it easy for you to to provide, you know, to um, deliver your functionality over the web without um, too much code. Um, one thing I should mention is the um, um, it was actually in this diagram here. You can see the data download. So if the data is not served by OpenDAP or some other remote protocols, then we actually download the data on the server. And we use actually Python salary framework for that. And the way it works is we just initiate a salary <coughs> task. So it can span actually as many processes in theory as you want. And it downloads the data in the background while you can still uh, do things on the, um, on the GUI. Uh, like some of the analysis or visualization. So you're not blocked by the, um, by the other processes. Um, like I mentioned, the, the workflow and provenance. So this is the uh, uh, kind of simple workflow that user has created. Um, normally, you don't see this interface um, because, I mean, as you can see, it has a lot of options in there. So it could be a little bit um, complicated for the uh, beginners. So what we do actually is that we create, we have web forms that you can fill out and then it will create the workflow for you, which later you can modify for your need. So in that way we hide the complexity. And if you know what you're doing, then you can directly start from here as well. So again, we're not binding 
uh, the user. And the idea here is that once you construct a workflow, it's just the, you're just creating a specification, and then you're putting all the input and outputs, but you're actually running the, the workflow on the, on the server side. So it just goes as a JSON um, spec, and then we parse that JSON, create the actual Python objects, and then uh, start the uh, process. Um, so we have actually successfully created uh, some of the applications like search and archive, um, visualization of the flood maps. Hopefully we, we will be having a release next month on that. Um, and we are trying, currently working on the comparative analysis and visualization. Uh, with that, uh, let me quickly show uh, the live demonstration of the climate pipes, and I'll try to explain as it runs. So here's a sample application that we have created. So you click on the one of the sample applications. It's kind of like a you know, hub of applications. Um, so it's going to show you, like, you can quickly search through different data sets. So I'm going to try something which I know, um, um, which is the, the cloud data set from the ESGF. And I'm going to pick some date um, and time range. Again, this is a demo application. It's, you know, so it's not uh, actually doing the filtering. Um, the, at least the time filtering, um, but it, it's doing the special filtering uh, as far as this demo is concerned. So you will see the data has came back very quickly and it's asynchronous, so as, it, as it finds more data, you will see more listing in there, you can drag and drop, and now you see the cloudiness on the world. Um, again, this rendering is done uh, uh, in the, on the uh, front end using WebGL, so it's pretty interactive. Um, we draw a legend of ourselves, we can animate the data in real time. Um, the interface is very simple. Again, it really dep depends upon the, what you want to create as far as the interface is concerned. Um, and then we can draw time series plots, which is computed on the back end. So it's a combination of back and front, front end, you know, depending on, again, where you want it to happen. Um, and then the, some other things I want to show is the uh, run processes in the background. And that's why we're actually using, or heavily using, the Python Celery framework, because we can launch as many tasks as on the back end and monitor their progress. And once they're done, we actually notify the users, um, and then they can you know, pick a particular algorithm to, to visualize them. Again, simple, uh, very simple workflow that we are showing here. And like I said, the um, that's done, the processing of that workflow is done on the backend side. Um, fast forwarding here, so drawing, trying to drag and drop the shape file on the map, um, and this could be actually utilized for subsiding operations on your climate or geospatial data set. Um, but the rendering is happening on the front end. So again, um, you know, we pick things as, uh, as it makes sense. Okay, so I guess I will move forward. Uh, really quickly, I want to mention the, the Paraview web framework. So um, the, it's similar to, well, the idea here is that we do more rendering uh, on the server side, and then we just send the images back. Um, we try to use that, but this demo that I've shown uh, earlier is using WebGL, so it's more interactive. So it depends upon like, which, what's your um, configuration is, we can pick one and choose, um, whether the backend rendering or the front-end rendering. The Paraview Web also has the API in Python, so it works for us because everything is in Python, we can consume it on the back end. Uh, so with that, let me actually talk about the Open Climate GIS. It's a project um, initiated at the NOAA, and uh, Ben Koziol is actually the lead programmer or developer. Um, he's not here today, so I'm, I'm doing uh, the presentation on his behalf, so I'll try to, to do my best to explain what this is all about. Um, so basically, Open Climate GIS was, um, 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 you know, created at NOAA, and the focus was more on the analysis. And some of the example, you know, analysis they wanted to do was subsetting computations, uh, data set bundling, format conversions, and extensibility. So um, it kind of like fits in really well with the client price environment, and that's why we try to use it. Um, a lot of you may have familiar with NOAA and then NC NCPP. NCPP mission is to advance the development of standards, tools, and information uh, that supports the, um, uh, pretty much the, the climate community that they have. Uh, it's climate and weather community they have in, uh, within the NOAA itself. So the Open Climate GIS uh, has been developed, again, um, 
within the Python environment, and it's using um, some of the uh, you know tools that we all know, like um, NumPy, um, uh, NetCD for Python, along with Shapely and Fiona for the um, geometry processing and the data writing, along with the uh, the uh, Python wrapped version of GDAL, um, and some other optional util util utilities for specific things. So it can do uh, multiple things. It can translate out of the climate data formats. It can um, select region of interest and then do subsetting on based on that. You can select the, uh, the time region. You can select the labels. Um, and also you can actually select the headers that needs to be written out if you're doing a format conversions. So the current release is, uh, actually this slide is a bit older. I think, I think they have released um, 0.1. Um, so it's, it's, it's functional and, and we have been using it in client pipes as well. So the, the basic structure is this. Um, so we have the Python API. Um, so Open Climate GIS has its own um, um, analysis algorithms, but it also wraps quite a few of other libraries, like I was mentioning earlier, um, the names of the libraries. So it has a data interface, so it uses NetCDF for Python to read NetCDF files, NumPy for processing, and subsetting along with Shapely, uh, Shapely for the geometry processing. Um, and then it's using NumPy for storage and computations along with the um, unit conversions using CF units Python. And ultimately, it's using the, um, the uh, Fiona and GDAL for the format conversion. So again, it's using um, a few open source tools and wrap them around in a nice way so that it makes it easier for you to use it. Um, so one of the nice things about the Open Climate GIS is it handles many types of geospatial subsetting. So points, arbitrary polygons, bounding boxes, collection of points and polygons. So pretty much the general operations that you will expect from a toolkit like this has, has been supported. Um, the most of the uh, work that's been done right now, and that, that's a limitation, but it will be, uh, I think uh, it may go away in future very soon, is that it's done serially, so it's, uh, it's not paralyzed yet, but the idea is to, that some of these tasks, or most of these tasks, you can, you can paralyze using um, MPFAPI or some other um, parallel techniques. Um, so some other um, um, computation, the computational frame, um, framework is consists of the um, some of the temporary um, group functions. You can do monthly means, annual maximums, durations. You can also define some string specs based functions, um, simple transformations, uh, and then multivariate functions like indices. So you can actually, I believe, it has um, already existing um, some some climate indices, but you can add more as you need. Uh, the dataset bundling is the idea here is that you can, you can run a particular set of operations on a variety of different data sets. So it will um, take care of all the conversions um, within the uh, framework itself. So you don't have to worry about like, those things uh, as a user. Now, as far as the, the format uh, conversion is concerned, so for the GIS, one of the important things is that uh, most of the GIS libraries or tools, they expect that you will get the data in the Azure shape file or some other, other raster formats. And most of the climate data set is NetCDF, or if it's weather, then it's GRIB, or some other format which is not GIS friendly. So one of the uh, nice things that are uh, delivered by the Open Climate GIS is a very simple function call that can convert a format into a GIS friendly format, including CSV, GeoJSON, or NetCDF. Um, as reshape files or something array based, which can be again visualized into any of the toolkits like matplotlib or anything like that. Um, I guess uh, this is probably my last slide. So, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, one of the goals for the Open Climate GIS to uh, extend uh, the framework and also make it parallel um, and we do actually have support for the ESMF, which is the, the regrading uh, framework within the client files, but it's not been done into the uh, Open Climate GIS yet, so hopefully that will be done soon enough. With that, thanks a lot. <laughs>